नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन 34 फोर ऑफ अवर कोर्स ऑन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग गाइडलाइंस फॉर प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन सो एज यू आर अवेयर वी आर करंटली इन द सेवेंथ वीक ऑफ अवर डिस्कशन एंड टुडे इज द थर्टी फोर्थ सेशन दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग एंड द टाइटल इज वेल क्लियर ऑन योर स्क्रीन दैट इज माइक्रोवेव ज्वाइनिंग सो इन द सिक्स एंड सेवन्थ वीक ऑफ अवर डिस्कशन ऑन दिस इम्पॉर्टेंट कोर्स दैट इज मैन्युफैक्चरिंग गाइडलाइंस फॉर प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन अवर फोकस प्राइमरली हैज बीन टू फोकस ऑन टू एम्फेसाइज ऑन टू हाईलाइट द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ ज्वाइनिंग वेन वी आर डिजाइनिंग अ प्रोडक्ट सो इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द सिक्स वीक वी फोकस्ड ऑन रिव्यूइंग द वेरियस ज्वाइनिंग स्ट्रैटेजीज ज्वाइनिंग प्रोसेसिज विच आर यूज फॉर ज्वाइनिंग ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पार्ट्स और प्रोडक्ट्स now depending upon the type of raw material whether we are going to join metals or we are going to join plastics or we are going to join advanced materials like ceramics or polymer composites different joining strategies have to be adopted and in the sixth week our focus primarily was on metals and we have seen that welding can be done for metals what are the different types of design guidelines that must be kept in mind when you are joining metals we have talked about soldering and brazing we have talked about hole making that is mechanical fastening in metals we have talked about riveting with different types of rivets and then we have seen fastening using the different types of screw fasteners so sixth week focused primarily on joining strategies which are well established then we focused on the advanced joining strategies because many a times when we are designing a product we are not able to design a product or a geometry or a material which can easily be processed by the conventional joining routes that is adhesive joining or welding or riveting or brazing or soldering so we have to go for the advanced joining strategies and there are different advanced techniques specifically designed for specific set of material so we have broadly classified materials into metallic non metallic and in non metallic we can talk about plastics and in this week if you remember if you have gone through the previous sessions you will appreciate that we have already seen the induction welding of plastics we have already seen ultrasonic welding of plastics we have seen vibration and spin welding which is specifically we can say used for plastic materials although these processes can also be used for joining of metals also we are not ruling out these processes for metals they can be used for metals also but the conventional joining strategies such as welding maybe a gas welding or arc welding or brazing or soldering is sometimes not suitable for plastics so these are the processes which make themselves available for joining of plastic materials so in this week we have already finished three sessions session number 1 was focused on induction welding of plastics session number 2 was dedicated towards ultrasonic welding in session number 3 vibration and spin welding that is session number 31 32 and 33 in our course and session number 1 2 and 3 for the seventh week of discussion today we are going to discuss another important technique which is currently in research stage many places it is being utilized also commercially for joining of different types of material and this technique is microwave joining so as a product designer when i am designing a product and i have to ensure that the different parts of the products have to be joined together at a later stage to get the complete assembly i must know that what are the various joining strategies that can be adopted to realize the complex product which is made in different parts so one of the processes which is <coughs> these days gaining significant importance is microwave joining so in today's session our target will be to have a brief review of the microwave joining of different types of materials and try to understand the basic mechanism of joining and try to see it with the help of an example with the help of a case study towards the end of today's session maybe for briefly for 5 minutes we'll have discussion on one case study in which the microwave joining has been used to join the different 
different types of workpiece materials and the case study is specifically based on polymer matrix composite materials. In the next session also when we will discuss session number 35 which is dedicated to hole making, we will be discussing the case studies related to hole making in polymer matrix composites because these are the materials which are going to be used in numerous application where plastics are being used in the current scenario. So, plastics in future may get converted into polymeric composites or may get converted into biopolymers keeping in mind the environmental concerns about the use of plastic materials. So, let us quickly now have a brief review of the microwave joining process. So, we will first start with the introduction. Let us try to understand that what microwave joining actually is. Now, joining word is absolutely clear to all of you that we have to join the two pieces together at maybe in the lab configuration here. So, this is my first adherent, second adherent have to be joined here as a lab configuration. Now, how to join them as I have already I, I think in each session of joining I have talked about the basic definition of welding. Now, welding as again I will emphasize that it is the joining of two similar or dissimilar material, similar or dissimilar materials with the application of heat with or without the application of pressure. So, here again heat is required to join these two pieces together. From where the heat will come, the source will vary and we have seen that in induction welding, the source will be electromagnetic induction effect. In case of vibration welding, we rub the mechanically, we rub the work pieces against each other and frictional heat is produced because of the rubbing action. Similar is the case with ultrasonic welding. So, in um, conventional welding, we use the heat of the electric arc. In gas welding, we use the flame for producing the heat. So, here again the source of heat is a microwave energy in microwave joining. So, when we have to join the two pieces together the source of heat in case of microwave joining is the microwave or the electromagnetic radiation. So, let us see now the microwave joining process is a non-conventional. Now, non-conventional itself says that it is its mechanism is different from the conventional methods of joining the two materials. It is applicable for joining different types of materials. So, at IIT Roorkee, we have been able to join the thermoplastic based composites using this technique and a research group with uh, Professor A. K. Sharma in the lead, they are working towards joining of different types of metallic materials also using the concept of microwave joining. So, susceptor materials are use, used to accelerate the heating process. Now, when we have to produce heat in this zone, so this heat can be accelerated with the help of susceptor materials. Now, susceptor materials are the materials, maybe one of the examples can be charcoal. So, if you are going to join these two pieces together, this is one adherent, this is another adherent. On the top of the two joint surfaces, we can put charcoal as the susceptor material. Now, charcoal has the tendency to absorb the radiation or the microwave radiation. So, the heat will be focused in the joint area only and a specific area will get heated and the joint will be formed. So, susceptor materials are used to, why they are used to accelerate the heating process. Source of heat here is the microwave radiation. So, basic uh, difference between microwave joining and the other forms of joining is basically the way in which we produce the heat which is used for joining the two pieces together. Here specifically we use the microwaves to produce the heat. Now, microwaves, what are microwaves now? Microwaves are electromagnetic waves which consist of an electric and a magnetic field orthogonal to each other with wavelengths in the range of 1 to 1000 millimeter. So, this clearly gives us an idea that what microwaves actually are and these are the same microwaves that we use for heating or cooking of our food in our domestic ovens or the domestic microwave ovens. So, same microwave oven can also be used for joining the polymeric parts, but there are certain precautions that we have to ensure that we have to only expose the joint area only to the microwaves. If we expose the complete polymer product to the microwaves, the melting of the polymer may take place at 
produced in totality means the complete product will be melted whereas we want to only melt the areas or selectively melt the area where we want to produce the joint so that is a catch so selectively we have to do the heating at the localized area so that the joint can be formed how to do that selective heating one of the strategies is that you put a susceptor material at the point for example let me draw a diagram this is one part and suppose this is the other part now this is the area that we want to join this is the top part this is the bottom part this is a lap area now what we can do we have to heat only this area that is the length x we want to heat so what we can do we can put the susceptor material here which can be charcoal and then we can place this complete assembly into the microwave cavity or the microwave oven now the electromagnetic radiations will be attracted by this charcoal material because it is a susceptor it has the tendency to to absorb the microwaves so this is the one strategy now we don't want that this portion of the material be exposed to the microwave so we have to do the masking of this material up to here and similarly the masking of this material up to this place so this masking can be done with various patented materials masking means that we will we will cover this portion with with a material which is opaque to the microwaves which is not transparent to the microwave so when, once the, we are covering it with a material which is opaque to the microwave microwave will come hit this opaque material and reflect back so they will not heat the portion or the section which we don't want to get heated so using these two strategies first is focusing the microwaves at the area of interest and then masking away the other portions we can very easily make a joint of plastics using the microwave energy so what are microwaves actually it is explained in the very first sentence microwaves are electromagnetic waves which consist of an electric and a magnetic field orthogonal to each other with wave wavelengths in the range of 1 to 1000 millimeter microwaves are wave energy that is converted into heat energy already i have explained it with the help of a diagram that we convert the heat energy depending upon the type of interaction with the target materials now target materials what are the target materials these are the two target materials which we want to form the this is the joint interface area so this is the these are target materials one and two and depending upon the type the nature of the target materials whether they are electrically conducting they are magnetic or not there will be interaction among the dipoles in the material and heat will be generated so microwaves are wave energy that is converted into heat energy depending upon the type of interaction with the target material now depending upon how microwaves interact with the material we will get whether it is opaque whether it is transparent whether it absorbs the microwave whether it reflects the microwave so that interaction will define that whether a particular material can be joined using the microwave energy or not and we will see in the subsequent slides examples where we will be able to understand that microwave is not a panacea it is not a uh, uh, <coughs> cure for all types of issues it is also selective in the type of materials which can be processed using the microwave energy some of the materials may not be possible for us to join them using the microwave energy so there are a specific set of materials which can be processed using the microwave energy but in other types of materials also research is undertaken and the research is going on to find out that how microwave energy can be used for joining of other materials also with little modification in the materials as well as major modifications in the process so let us now go to some specific areas where microwave energy can be utilized the processing of a material using microwave depends on its dielectric and magnetic properties as the electric field and magnetic field components interact with the material during the irradiation so very very important point as i have told you in the previous point that is point number 2 that microwaves are not you can say universal in their 
heating mechanism universal means that they don't heat all the materials in a common manner or in a uniform manner depending upon the dielectric properties of the material depending upon the magnetic properties of the material we will be able to differentiate the different types of materials that these materials can be processed by microwave energy these materials cannot be processed by the microwave energy now <coughs> this electric field and magnetic field components in the material interact with the material during the irradiation. So, these co components as we have already seen here microwaves are electromagnetic waves which consist of an electric and magnetic field. So, these fields interact with the material and produces heat. So, if a material is maybe has a good dielectric properties maybe is poor in the magnetic properties it will behave to the exposure of microwaves in a different manner. On the contrary the material is poor having poor dielectric properties but good magnetic properties it will interact with the microwaves in a different manner. So, depending upon the dielectric and magnetic properties of the materials they will interact with the microwaves and that will define that how the heating will take place. Now, this is the very very important diag uh, diagram or figure because many of us usually confuse that what is the difference between the heating using the conventional methods and what is the heating mechanism in microwaves. And we have seen in the previous slide also there are number of words that are quite catchy but difficult to understand. For example, the dielectric property of the material, the magnetic properties of the material, the electric and the magnetic components of the electromagnetic radiation. So, all these are quite complex terms to understand in a very brief period of maybe 20 to 25 minutes. So, this diagram clearly explains that in conventional heating process, the, this is the heating element already shown in red color and this is a sample. So, it is heated in a conventional manner from outside. So, maybe the heating may start from the periphery and then the heat front will travel towards the center. So, temperature will be maybe higher at the outer periphery of the job or the workpiece or the component that we are heating and slowly the temperature will increase towards the center. Whereas, in microwave heating, the heating will start from the, there will be a volumetric heating, volumetric. So, the all the component will start getting heated at the same time. So, this is the insulation. So, here we can see that you get the heating from the center. So, you can see heat is being liberated here because it is the material is that producing the heat. It is not that the in we are the heat is coming from outside. So, there is no outside heating element. There you can see there is a heating element here this uh, portion and this portion whereas here you do not see any heating element the microwaves go the different components of the microwave enter into the material and then they interact with the material and internally only heat is produced and that heat you can see is liberated out. So, that is the microwave way of heating the materials. Similarly, you can see when you use the domestic microwave ovens, you do not see any heating elements around. There are microwave ports through which the microwaves are irradiated on the food that we want to heat and then the food gets hot uh, because of the movement or because of dipole movement reorientation. So, there is a mechanism which we will try to understand in the subsequent slides that what happens inside the material when it is exposed to the microwaves and what type of heating takes place. So, let us quickly now move to that. Now, before going to uh, that mechanism of heating, let us try to see the microwave material processing. There are number of advantages. So, already I have highlighted this part which I am again writing that it is an important uh, characteristics of microwave uh, that it leads to volumetric heating. So, the everywhere in the product or the component or the joint that we are making the temperature will be more or less constant. So, the, which is an example of the volumetric heating. So, when the volumetric heating takes place the heating process is fast uniform heating because everywhere the temperature is more or less same. It is it causes lower pollution, environment friendly, a wide variety of materials can be processed, lower processing time and cost. You can see how quickly you can cook your food in a microwave cavity or how you quickly you can warm your food in a or heat your food in a 
in a microwave oven. It is economical, lower defects are there and selective heating is another important characteristic as I have tried to explain that when we are going to join two pieces, we can selectively heat the joint interface area by putting a susceptor material there. So, these are the broad characteristics of microwave joining process. Now, what are the various heating mechanisms because once you are able to produce the heat at the joint interface automatically the joining will take place. So, what are the various heating mechanisms in microwave processing? Let us try to see. We have seen that the different types of materials will behave differently on exposure to the microwave radiation. So, the non-magnetic materials let us take the first case. The non-magnetic materials are affected only by the electric field component of the microwave. So, in the very beginning maybe two slides before this, we have already seen that the electromagnetic radiation or the microwave radiation consists of two components, the electric component and the magnetic component. So, the non-magnetic materials are affected only by the electric field component of the microwaves. The two main loss mechanisms for non-magnetic material such as aluminum, copper, water, polymers and ceramics non-magnetic materials are dipolar losses and conduction losses. So, these two will lead to production of heat, the dipolar losses and the conduction losses. Conduction losses dominate in metallic and high conductivity materials whereas, dipolar losses dominate in the dielectric insulators. So, for in order to understand these terms in much more detail, for example, the dielectric insulators, <coughs> then dipolar losses we need to understand. I will give you a reference, you can go to that reference and study these terms in much more detail, but basic uh, understanding that we can develop during this short time which you are spending on microwave joining is that the electromagnetic radiation the microwaves or the microwave radiation consists of two different types of components, one is the electric component, another one is the magnetic component and these two components interact with the dial with the material with having different dielectric properties, different magnetic properties, different types of conductivity and because of this interaction between the various components of the radiation and the various properties of the material, heat is produced and this heat is used to heat the material and this heat we can also use to join the two materials together. Now, this is a very important slide the dipolar loss you can see the dipolar loss is more effective in dielectric insulator. So, this is again a category of a material some materials will dielectric insulators in which dipoles are generated when exposed to external electric field. So, dipoles we can see the dipoles here in the diagram are generated when exposed to the external electric field. These materials include water ceramic, ceramic matrix composite, polymer matrix composites and the food products. Now, let us try to see this is the green portion we can say is the movement of the microwave. So, microwave transparent water container inside the microwave applicator. So, this is a microwave transparent water container inside the microwave applicator. So, microwaves enter. So, there is a because this is water. So, there is a oxygen atom and a hydrogen atom. External electric field E is applied heating in first half of the cycle. Then this is the heating in the next half of the cycle. So, dipole movement is there. Heating mechanism is dipolar loss. So, this is the heating of heating mechanism for water. So, this is heating of water with the microwaves. So, we normally we see that in microwave when we keep our uh, glass of water we can easily heat it. So, how what happens inside you can see here this is hydrogen and oxygen molecules which forms the dipoles and the dipoles are the uh, source of heat which produces heat from internal sources only or from internal movement or reorientation of the dipoles only. Now, conduction losses, this loss is significant 
in microwave processing of pure metals metallic based materials and semiconductors so and metal matrix composite so there is a positive ion here there is a free electron here so these are the microwaves again green portion microwaves shown here the external electric field e heat generation takes place you can see there is this is the no heating area and this is the when the microwaves are irradiated on the material there is uh, you can say change in the position of the positive and the ions and the free electrons which causes heat induced current and magnetic field heating in the first half of the cycle oscillating electric field which causes the uniform heating so you can see that there is a transition between the positive ion and the free electrons which causes the heating that is the heating mechanism by the conduction loss and the details are given in an article a review article a very very comprehensive review article published by Radha Raman Mishra and Professor A.K. Sharma that is microwave material interaction phenomenon heating mechanisms challenges and opportunities in material processing the article is published in composites part A applied science and manufacturing page number is also given volume 81 page number 78 to 97 a very very comprehensive article which explains the complete mechanism of heating for different types of materials we have only taken two example conduction loss loss and the previous one was a dipolar loss but in the much more detail the comprehensive details are given for different types of material with different case studies i have been explained in much more detail so we can see here that dipolar losses are the cause of heating in case of water and various other materials which are dielectric insulators and for the other other type of materials for example conduction loss takes place in copper aluminium silicon iron nickel or metal matrix composites so these are the two maybe uh, mechanism for heat production of heat or generation of heat in different types of materials so two different families of materials we have seen in the previous slide the dipolar loss is the uh, we can say dominating mechanism of heat generation here the conduction loss is the dominant mechanism of heat generation now heating mechanisms in polymers because we are talking in this week on polymers so most of the thermoplastics have low dielectric loss factor therefore susceptor materials are used to generate sufficient amount of heat so we can see here that depending upon the dielectric properties of the polymers we may not be able to produce a sufficient amount of heat and therefore the need of the susceptor material becomes inevitable so we are able to produce sufficient heat in the in case of polymers by using the susceptor materials because of the low dielectric loss factor of the polymers thermosets start heating after interacting so this is another case thermosets this is related to thermoplastics so in thermoplastics we can use a susceptor material in thermosets they start heating after interacting with the microwaves but after some time as polymerization occurs heating of thermosets slow down growth of polymeric chain restrict the interaction of thermoset to the microwaves so which means that thermosets are not that good materials which can be processed with the help of microwaves so thermoplastics yes we can process them using microwave energy but with the help of a susceptor material now this is a summary of the materials different types of materials depending upon the interaction of the microwaves with the material as well as the properties of the materials for example the dielectric loss factor or the dielectric properties of the material the magnetic properties of the material they will behave differently to the exposure of the microwave radiation so we can see here a interaction mechanism material behavior sometime it will be transparent so example the teflon glass alumina which are transparent to the microwaves opaque copper aluminium steel are opaque to the microwaves absorber silicon carbide i have already told charcoal is used as a susceptor material these are absorbers of microwaves then mixed absorber composite material carbon fiber reinforced so they are mixed absorber used in the selective heating of materials used in microwave hybrid heating these absorbers so depending upon now we have maybe category number one category number two 
category number 3 category number 4 we can broadly classify the engineering materials into four categories on how they react to the microwave radiation or how they behave on exposure to the microwave radiation we can have fully transparent materials we can have opaque materials we can have absorbers of the microwave we can have mixed absorbers also now depending upon the type of material we can choose our strategy that how the material can be processed using the microwave radiation now this is just one case study that we have done at iit roorkee a lap joint is used as the successful joint configuration for microwave joining in comparison to butt joint so this is maybe lap joint is more suitable as compared to a butt joint in case of microwave joining so this is the joint which was formed using the microwave energy and this is adherent number 1 this is adherent number 2 so two adherents joined like this thus in this case it is like this this is first ad adherent number 1 adherent number 2 and at the interface a microwave energy was used to produce this joint this is a span of the lap joint this is a bonding area of the lap joint and this is adherent 1 this is distorted but composite sample so we have tried using butt joint configuration also we have tried using lap joint composite also so lap joint was successful we were able to successfully form a lap joint in a composite material using the concept of microwave energy now what are the advantages of the microwave joining the application of microwave energy in the processing of various materials such as ceramics metals and composites offers several advantages over conventional heating methods so they can be used for ceramics metals and composites or we can also say polymer based composites what are the advantages unique microstructure and properties of the final product rapid heating energy saving reduction in manufacturing cost synthesis of new materials maybe one one material can be joined to a different material using the microwave energy depending upon the dielectric properties or as well as magnetic properties of the materials that are being joined so we have different types of advantages that we can derive out of microwave joining of materials so with this we can conclude the today's session i think we have not gone into the design complexities involved just one guideline we have seen that lap joint is better to process as compared to a butt joint in case of joints for microwave joining but we have been able to address that microwave joining is an important joining technique which can be used for joining similar or dissimilar materials rapidly quickly without harming the environment as well as without much energy so it is a energy efficient process which can be easily used for joining of different types of materials so for basic mechanism as well as the various properties that a material must pos possess if it has to be processed using the microwaves that is still left to be discussed but because of the paucity of time we are concluding the discussion here i have given you a very good reference written by professor ak sharma if you can go through that reference and try to understand the basic mechanisms of heating in the material when it has got a good dielectric loss factor or when if it has got a poor dielectric loss factor uh, loss factor so all those details can be further studied and the knowledge can further be developed in the area of microwave joining of materials but certainly in this last 25 minutes we have been able to address an important joining strategy for different types of materials in our next session we will talk about hole making in different types of materials and what are the various guidelines which must be kept in mind when we start making holes in the materials with this we conclude our session number 34 thank you